breaking news coming out of Michigan. The polls closing just seconds ago. In the Democratic primary, we can now project that President Biden has won. The numbers show he won with a sizable lead, but we are also tracking those uncommitted votes. Many made as that protest against the Biden administration's handling of the war in Gaza. So far, that vote appears to be close to 16 percent on the Republican side. Former President Donald Trump now projected to win against Nikki Haley. The former president set to continue his undefeated streak, but the numbers in that race are curious as well. Scripps News has Michigan covered with resources that most networks can't touch. Affiliates across the state, affiliates in Detroit, in Lansing, Grand Rapids, all of that on top of our own Scripps News political team. Our Scripps News congressional correspondent, Stephanie Liebergen is live for us tonight in Detroit. Uh, Stephanie, um, and also our Scripps News political director, Andrew Rafferty, tracking the results from our newsroom in Washington. So, Stephanie, I will start with you. What is your read from Michigan as where things stand right now? We've called the race, but the numbers are curious. So. Hey, Dell. Uh, good evening. Sorry about the faces. I might have just been making. We had some microphone squeaking going on behind me. So I am in downtown Detroit where all of these folks behind me are counting the absentee ballots for the city of Detroit. And that uh, the high number of absentee ballots could be why I saw such low turnout at all the precincts that I was at today. It was a very slow stream of voters coming in. And part of that uh, potentially low turnout, of course, we won't know until all the ballots are tabulated, um, but part of that low turnout could have been a lack of enthusiasm for the two leading candidates, former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden. But it also could have just been um, a lack of excitement about this primary. The fact that it's pretty much already set um, and locked up. This was the first time that Michigan was voting before Super Tuesday. But the other early voting states, in a way, almost stole Michigan's thunder. Um, and there wasn't a lot of competition by the time the race even got here. But again, this crew behind me um, has been, I can tell very recently, they were just sitting and waiting for a new batch of ballots to show up. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson was here earlier tonight handing out some cookies to all of these folks as they were doing the important work of counting all these absentee ballots, of which there were a lot across the state of Michigan. Um, about a million people voted early, a vast majority of them voting early by mail, and then some folks taking advantage of the new early in-person voting in Michigan. But no surprises, as you said, Dell, with former President Trump winning the Republican nomination, President Joe Biden winning the Democratic nomination, and then on we'll go um, to Super Tuesday next week. Scripps News political correspondent Stephanie Liebergen for us in Detroit tonight. Let's turn now to RAF. Our Scripps News political director, Andrew Rafferty. Raf, I'm looking at the numbers right now. Let's just say curiouser and curiouser. What do tonight's results mean for Super Tuesday and the race going forward? Yeah, well, Dell, this is a familiar theme that you and I have been through before. Polls close. We call it for Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And then we wait, wait to see just what the margin is, essentially how much is Nikki Haley going to lose by and But on the Democratic side, it is how much is uncommitted going to get. I think that is probably the most interesting storyline right now. And right now, you see it at about 16%. That is far and above some of the estimations of what organizers around the uncommitted effort ultimately were hoping to get. 16% is a notable number because 15% is the threshold that you would need to get delegates based on the Democratic rules in Michigan. So you could see a scenario where the uncommitted actually gets delegates and the Biden campaign essentially has to explain that. But it is important to note that the people who voted uncommitted in Michigan, and we've heard this reporting from staff and a number of our other reporters on the ground there, it doesn't mean that they are not going to uh, support Joe Biden in November. This is very much about the election happening tonight. On the other side of the aisle, for Republicans, Nikki Haley, uh, we heard her talk about getting that 40% number in her home state of South Carolina Saturday night. Right now, she's pretty far from uh, that same metric on the low 30s, but she's been doing some interviews over the past few hours, essentially downplaying the results, saying she didn't spend a whole lot of time in Michigan, which is true. She only had a handful of campaign stops there. And tonight she's on uh, out actually uh, around Utah and Colorado, where she's been campaigning the next couple of days, really focused on Super Tuesday. Also of note from the Haley campaign is that uh, she has made clear that she is going to continue on at least until Super Tuesday on March 5th, Dell. Raf, I'm looking at the numbers on both sides. Should be cause for concern. Of course, the number of uncommitted on the Biden campaign. But because Nikki Haley did not campaign, those numbers weren't too shabby. 
I mean, it, you know, we've been kind of like trying to read the tea leaves here about it, whether or not the, you know, Donald Trump on the one hand, he's won all uh, the primaries so far. On the other hand, there's still, you know, 30 to 40 percent of the Republican electorate that ultimately is looking for an alternative to the former uh, president. I, I think the reality is that Donald Trump's continued streak is uh, is intact and that uh, he's going to be a lot closer to getting the nomination one week from today when we see all those delegates available on Super Tuesday. Our political director, Andrew Rafferty, for us tonight in Washington. Raff, thank you very much. President Biden, as we have been pointing out, is the projected winner of the Michigan primary. Despite that uncommitted movement, Arab and Muslim Americans making their anger over the president's support of Israel, known by casting their ballot for no one, Javed Ali joins us now. He is an associate professor at the University of Michigan School of Public Policy. Mr. Ali, you know Michigan well. I want to start with a conversation we had on Scripps News last night. We talked to the director of the Arab American group, Abandoned Biden, and this is what she had to say. Take a listen. The majority of Americans support a ceasefire. And so when we have this kind of rhetoric or this kind of talk about Trump and the fear mongering and the scare tactics, really, it doesn't it doesn't phase us anymore. We are our goal is still to oust Biden. That is not going to change. So she maintains the goal is to oust Biden. 16.1 percent so far that we're looking at seems to indicate that they would agree with her. Do you see that translating into the fall? And how big of a problem will this be for the president of the United States? Well, thanks for having me on this evening. And as you mentioned, I am from Michigan. Uh, I grew up there before I moved to Washington, D.C. and had my career in national security. Now I'm back teaching at the University of Michigan. And so uh, over the past several months, this, this very diverse coalition of different organizations and individuals has come together in response to what they believe and you know, what the world has seen in terms of the, the suffering of innocent uh, Palestinians in Gaza. And so it's brought us to today to the 16% uncommitted vote in the Democratic primary, but there's still so much that could happen in between now and November. And as President Biden said, well, if there is a ceasefire, whether it's temporary or, or long-term in the coming days, will that <coughs> temper this anger? Will it allow for more votes to, to go back from being uncommitted to being in support of President Biden? I mean, these are the variables that I think are going to be in play in the next several months. Mr. Ali, how do, how do voters in Michigan square the circle that they are angry at President Biden, but a no vote could lead to Donald Trump being elected? This is someone who in the past has called for a Muslim ban. Take a listen. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. We have no choice. We have no choice. When I brought that up to the uncommitted leaders last night, the people leading the uncommitted vote, they said they didn't care. They said that this is their protest vote, and if Donald Trump winds up being the president, so be it. Well, that seems to be one of the paradoxes of this position. If the goal with some of these individuals or some of these organizations is to oust President Biden in November, then and if uh, President Trump is the the Republican nominee and he he wins the general election, then you will likely have, or there will likely be uh, a president who um, will double down on their support for Israel and also um, uh, bring back some of that tough language that we just heard from the clip and potentially lead to, to policy results too with these immigration bans or other type of travel restrictions. But there apparently are some people and organizations in this broad and diverse um, movement that to them, that's an acceptable outcome. They, they're they more focused on getting the ceasefire, uh, the relief to the suffering of the Palestinians in Gaza and you know some kind of solution for, for what the, the future holds for security in Gaza versus having a Trump administration in 2025. But again, to a lot of other folks, that seems to be a paradox. I'm curious, how do you interpret the numbers that we're seeing on our screen? Voters in Michigan have voted uncommitted lots of times when they didn't like something or someone on the ballot. In 2012, more than 20,000 voters chose uncommitted over then-President Barack Obama. 
chunks of voters in other states that same year taking out their anger at both Barack Obama and the Republican challenger Mitt Romney in the primaries. There have never been enough to unseat a nominee, so is this an exercise in futility? Well, I don't think the, the people who are voting see it that way. They see this as their, their ability to deliver a strong message to this current administration uh, over their, their anger over the, um, the U.S. policy um, in supporting Israel. But in terms of, of why this uncommitted vote now, what I think is different uh, in, in Michigan politics and probably domestic politics writ large, this is over a national security issue thousands of miles away overseas. And generally voters don't vote that way, um, even un unless you really have people who are directly affected, like when we had the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And even then, I don't think you saw these sort of uncommitted uh, movements based on anger over policy then. So this is what seems to be so different as it's playing out in Michigan with this very diverse community here. And it'll be really interesting to see over the next several months, will, there be, will this uh, uncommitted movement pop up in other states throughout the country and also potentially raise problems for President Biden going forward. It's safe to say lots of people where you are in Washington, D.C. will be crunching a lot of numbers tonight. Javad Ali, professor at the University of Michigan. Professor, thanks for being with us tonight.